Today I've got a really fun card project to share featuring some new releases from Gina K Designs. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I'm sharing a card featuring some new products from the latest Gina K Designs card kit. Now, one thing with Gina's kits, when they first come out, they are a fantastic deal altogether. But if you're not in the market for a full kit, you can always wait one month and then those products 99.9% .9 of the time are released into the store. It's probably 100. I don't know why I said that. But today I'm working with this modern floral stamp, die, and stencil, and it is so beautiful. And the best part is you can be wonky and it's still gonna turn out great. To see my card project, stick around. That video is coming up next. Here's a look at the products I'm going to be creating with today. I may bring in more inks, but right now we're starting out with this modern floral stamp set and the coordinating stencil and coordinating dies. So what I wanna start doing is I'm gonna take some gold powder and embossing ink, and I'm going to stamp a few flowers here to get started with the project. So let's get out the misty and get to stamping. I'm starting out today with some of Gina's heavy base weight white, and I'm gonna press that down, and I'm gonna start by stamping a couple of these and embossing them in gold. Now, you could do your die cut shape first, but what I wanted to do was kind of figure out how this is gonna look before I die cut, and I think this will be helpful for me. So we're gonna pick this up this is brand new, so I'm just gonna prime this a little bit. It has a coating on it from manufacturing and it will just stamp much more nicely when you prime. I'll take my anti-static powder tool and I'm just gonna powder up the cardstock just to remove static and oil, kind of cover up where I was handling this. I have a waffle flower grip mat in here and I was asked during a live stream, how do I handle getting anti-static powder on the mat because obviously it will reduce the stick. What I do is I usually take this mat out and wash it once or twice a week depending on how often I'm stamping and embossing and I let it air dry. Um, that's what I do to keep it nice and sticky and I just wash it with warm water and Dawn dish soap. All right, let's ink this up nicely and press this down and transfer. I'm gonna hit it one more time just to get a really nice coating. And then I think I'm gonna flip my paper and stamp one more on the other side so I have at least two to start with. Like that, that should be great. I can see it on there, I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna keep it nice and not very handled. Go like that and repeat. Hopefully it's not too close. I can't see yet, but I think it will be okay. All right. All right, let me get my little pink piece of paper so that I can pour my powder on. I'll be using Gina K Designs Fine Detail Gold. Sprinkle that on. Oh, I need to order more of this powder. aren't too close together. I don't think so. I think we're going to be fine because now, now that I can see what this looks like, I can die cut these and then do my ink blending on here. All right, that looks great. Also, if you're wondering what this is, it's cheap copy paper that I buy reams of. I think it's like 20 pound pink, the cheapest paper on the planet. And that's what I use for my paper catches or if I have something really messy to do. It's not cardstock, believe me. It's just lovely cheap paper. All right, let me get my heat tool so I can melt the powder. This is not sounding good, and I'll just let you know. I just ordered a new embossing tool because it's making really weird noises. All right, here we go. See that nice shine? 
melted powder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the die here so I can cut them out, but you know what I should have done while I was at it? I should have done the friend and the hello and figured that out, but maybe I'll do that off camera because I think this would be really pretty also in gold. So maybe I'll stamp and emboss those really quick as well. And then we will move on. But I'm gonna grab the dies for this first. I've got my die cut machine here, my intricut, and I may, I may have stamped those two close together. I guess we're gonna see. But I also went ahead and stamped and embossed in gold the friend and miss you. So I'm just gonna cut these out at the same time and see what happens. So we always wanna cut into the mat. I know it's off camera a little bit. And then take the platform and pop it on top. I've got it set to die cut, and I'll just go ahead and run that through. Hopefully it doesn't hit my monitor on the other side. I don't have a lot of space to work in. There we go, alrighty. And now, let's take a look. I might be able to squeeze that die in over there. I'm gonna give it a try, but there is one floral with the detail. And here is my friend, come on out, there we go, looks great. And my little tiny miss you, and that's very sweet. All right, let me cut this one out and then we're gonna do some ink blending. Get this all nicely lined up, and I'm using my grip mat here to just have a nice little border going all around my flower. Oh, I'm a little off there. Oh, no, I wasn't actually, that was the, <laughs> I'm lining it up, getting it there, getting it there, and I think this is what's nice about the die cut, right, is that it will stay in place on this grip mat and it holds it perfectly while I'm blending. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually, I actually brought in Light Carnation 2 because I want to see what this looks like. So I'm gonna ink this up. I haven't used this brush in a while, so I wanna make sure I get a nice amount of the light carnation, kind of tap it into the bristles, okay? And now this is a little detailed here, so you wanna kinda, you know, not go too hard so that you go underneath, but I'm gonna come in from the outside like this. Oh my gosh, this color is so pretty, all right? Just kinda come in this way and bring in towards the center. Now, what I wanna do is grab my peach bellini and then blend, get, get my brush loaded up. And again, wanna make sure it's tapped into the bristles. Hold that part down there and I wanna have the peach bellini in the center. Just to kinda create a little extra tone it kind of just deepens it up, but I think it's gonna be very pretty. All right, so that's in this, that's flower one. Not gonna do anything else. I'm gonna lift this up like that, okay? And look how pretty that is. Oh, it's gorgeous. Now let's figure out where the other part goes here. Actually, let me wipe this up really quick. And while I'm at it, the way I clean my stencils these days, uh, take a little alcohol in a bottle, give it a nice spritz like that, and just wipe it up with a towel. The nice thing about using alcohol, it gets the color off and it dries instantly, but I don't wanna rub too hard because I, I don't wanna muck up the uh, little delicate parts. I think what I want to do, oh, there we go. I got it. It just takes a minute. Sometimes, right, it takes you, no, that's not it either. There. Oh my gosh. So now I'm going to bring in a darker color and we're going to move into the medium carnation. I think I'm mostly lined up there. Yeah, it's probably, I probably made it harder than it has to be, right? It does not have to be that hard, but now we're just going to blend on this part right onto the flower like that so it's nice and dark in the center and creates a little bit of dimension that we did not have before like that and take it off 
and there you have a beautiful bloom. All right, let's pick you up. Now I am going to repeat that on the other flower. I actually forgot one part and that is the center right here. And you know what? I, I think I could just grab the dark carnation. Hold tight. All right, for this one, I'm just gonna open this up. I'm gonna use a little tiny uh, shader, shader brush and we'll just go like this. That's it, just a little dark. Dark carnation, good to go. Five minutes later. So I have to show you something. This is the first flower I did. This was the second flower and this was the third. And I think I went too heavy handed on this one. So I am going to go with these ones and for these two, I did not use that third color. I only used the light and medium carnation. However, now I had a little, a little thought. Okay, let's stay with me here. Okay, I want to cut a panel and I'm going to use my Gina K Designs Master Layouts 2 for the panel. But I don't want to cut it yet because what I want to do is I want to come up with an arrangement for my card. Now, I think what I will be doing is putting friend sort of in the middle of my blooms and having miss you friend be something like that, okay? Where it's where it's like that because I think that's really cute. But what I wanted to do was then find a way to incorporate that and that or even just once, but I think I could stamp this and this at opposing corners and then use this part of the stencil to fill that in. And these are meant to be wonky, okay? They really are. And so I think what I'm gonna do is just hold this in place, grab my Misty, put my stamp in one place so that I know when I flip it, it will be a mirror image. Let me try and see if this works. So I'm gonna take this little friend off and let's see, how does this go? I'll figure it out once I have the stencil on. But the, uh, the reason I wanna do this is I want to, I want to emboss it. And so how about if we go like that, pretending like that's gonna be behind, right? And then I'm gonna pick it up and know that we're in the right place. Let's see if this works. Get all my lovely pieces off here, okay? Get this out of the way for now. And I'm gonna give that a little, little prime and I'm going to powder up with my anti-static powder tool. It's because I've been handling this a little. Although I will say the Gina K Designs Heavy Base Weight is a very smooth finish to the cardstock. And I think that's really nice for just letting powder float off. All right, let's do this. See, the reason I want to die cut it after the stamping is so that it will flatten out my panel, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna flip it and do a mirror image, okay? And try not to handle it too much. Pick it up, pop it down, drop it in, and repeat. And then we're gonna ink blend on that, but I think I'm just gonna do it in the light pink for a little more texture to my card. All right, now I will pick you up. Like that. That way we're gonna have the same gold detailing that's in the flowers. Okay. That looks great. Now I have this piece and I will get set up with my grip mat again and we'll ink blend. Now here's where you can have some fun because the stencil fits perfectly like this, but you can also do like a little offset. And I think I wanna do that offset because look how cute that is just to have that little, little bit of offset. I think that's really cute. And let me see here. 
like that. I want it to be purposefully offset, but let me see. I don't have any masking magic handy, so I'm going to put a post-it note here. And I'm going to put a post-it note here to protect my cardstock. And I think just to be safe, because I never know if I'm going to go a little wild. So see how that has that offset? I love that. You can make it funky and wonky. And I'm only going to do light carnations. So here I'm going to tap it into the brush and just lightly blend so that we get a cute little flower pattern that is going to be on the card, giving a little more texture and interest, just keeping it light like that, okay? And here, I guess I could just lift all of this up with the post-its, see how that looks, isn't that cute? And again, well, I guess I could just pick it up off here and a little, a little color, like that. But I want that to be very light and textural. All right. So now I just have a little bit in my background. All right, let me get this cleaned up and we'll move on. Next, I just have to reconfigure my flowers because I'm going to probably do the flowers with these two here. I, I moved the darker one to the bottom. I think I'm going to do them with thin foam squares and then these will pop up on top. So I think if I cut this right about here, I am going to put a piece of low tack tape down and I'll just go ahead and really quickly cut that out off camera. I went ahead and took the larger frame to create a really thin matte gold layer and I used the other die just to cut out the center so that I can put that in my scrap bin and save that for another card project. All right, let's see here. So I'm going to take my tape runner. I just put this so that I don't get glue all over my surface because I tell you, I do. I tend to get glue on the, on the glass mat and even though it cleans off just fine, then I can't see it and I get it on my projects. So we're gonna do that. Just so that we can put that little guy on this and have that little mat. Forgive my head if it gets in the way. I just got to get that nicely centered here. I think, oh, yeah, my head's way in the way. I think that's going to be very sweet to have that little gold mat when you've got the other gold elements. All right, let me put some foam tape on the back. I think today I'll use my Altenew foam tape because it is nice and thick, has a nice loft to it. I'll definitely put one right in the center. See, my paper only has a little warping and I think that's gonna be okay. Put you here. Although maybe this would have been better to have four pieces, but we'll see. Over adhesive here at work. Mm -hmm. Okay, get you right. Oh, we're a little long. There we go. Uh, set you there. All right. Now, now the question is, what is my note card color? It's probably going to be white, but I also wanted to get, want to get foam squares on the back of both of my flowers. And actually, I kind of like the idea that my flowers will extend out of the the boundary over the gold like that. So let's see here. Oh yeah. All right, hold tight. I cut a piece of innocent pink, which I think is going to be just gorgeous with this. Those light carnations look and medium look so good with innocent pink. And this is 11 inches by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half. So we'll fold that down. We'll give that a nice press here. All right. Now I think I well I'm going to tape it closed. Okay, like that. And make sure that stays there. Okay, so we've got, you're ready. I haven't put the foam squares on yet, but I like that arrangement. So let's pop this on the note card. Okay. 
forgive my head again if it gets in the way. Oh, look at that margin of space. It's so pretty. And press. All right, now I need my foam squares. And I feel like I only need probably one in the middle of each because I think, I think that's enough. I just wanted it to have a little lift, you know? Not all the lift in the world. Put one right in the middle. Although, although, hold on here. I could do, see, cause yeah, I wanna have kinda like, kinda like that and that poking out. Okay, so I think I can safely say one out here and one over here, like that, just to give it that little bit of extra. And let's do that as well. A little extra there, here. Okay. And then flip. Oh, I just think that's so... See how fun that is, though, just having that little extra bloom around the side? I love it. And then that can overlap a little like that. Yeah, maybe I do need one little thin piece of foam. I think of these things after I get going, but you know what? Because I'm putting a greeting on top, I think I need foam right there to support the greeting from that end. Okay, and maybe actually now, <laughs> take that other little piece and put that there. Okay, all right, like that. I think that's how we're gonna do it. Let's put you on first. All right, and flip you over, grab you so I can at least kind of hover. Wait, which way? Oh, that way. Okay, so just a little of that poking out, right? Right, like that. Okay, right to the edge there, all right? I may use a little liquid glue on this because I want it well. Yeah, I'm going to hold tight. You know me, I like to I like to hedge the bets. All right, dot, 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 dot. And now, I think what I'll do, we're gonna go under you like that. All right, it's so cute, okay. Then, friend, I think, well, you know what? If I've gone this far, maybe I should have some thin foam squares on that. Let me pop some on real quick. So, we did add foam to this too. Miss you, friend. Oh, that's gonna be so cute. Okay, taking the backers off. Oh, like that. I have that one very close to the edge, but I think this will be okay because I really just wanted this to be right about, I wanna still be able to see the little florals underneath and put that right about there. Okay. Oh, that's cute. And it's down lower than I thought it was gonna be, but I think that's fine because I am going to add some pearls to this. Why not? I've gone this far. Sometimes you gotta go all in, you know? You gotta, you gotta go the distance. All right, little liquid glue, and then the Miss You is going to be right up top and nice and straight, like that, fitting right into that little area. Miss You, friend. I think that's really cute. Oh, I love it. All right, let me get an arrangement of pearls. To finish off this card, I'm gonna use some, this calls for confetti gold beads. I actually just got this pack of pearl style uh, embellishments and I'll just use my Connect glue to pop them on. Like that. Little glue there. And boop. Swallowed that boop, get there that. Sometimes I have to do this right-handed with pearls because you got to pick them straight up. Boop. Like that. Oh, that's so good. Actually, you know what? I can do this right hand. I can do this right-handed. Boop. 
love that. I love when I have a new set of pearls because they have little tiny ones. Okay. Boop. Look how tiny. It's, it's just so little. I love it. And boop. And that is my finished card project. How sweet is that? These funky flowers that can be wonky and offset. Plus I did the extra flowers behind there just to give it a little more texture. And then of course using the master layouts to create that frame. I love how this card project turned out. You can find links to the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you, so hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell while you're at it so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. To see more cards featuring products from Gina K Designs, check out the two thumbnails below and I will see you in those videos.